In this podcast, we will talk about preferences and utility. You will learn what we mean by consumer preferences, what we mean by the utility function that, rep that represents such preferences, what are the basic assumptions that we make on preferences, and finally, you will learn how we write down the consumer choice problem. Consumer preferences tells us how a consumer ranks any two baskets. Let's consider an example with two baskets. Basket A contains two dozen eggs and one pound of coffee, and basket B contains one dozen eggs and two pounds of coffee. We can also represent these baskets graphically. Forget about how much these baskets might cost, forget about price and income altogether. Just assume that you know the preferences of this consumer. Let's call her again Mary. What does it mean knowing Mary's preferences? I guess it means that you know how she ranks these two baskets, right? That's right. We might know that Mary likes A better than B, or we might know that Mary likes A less than B. In fact, we also want to consider the possibility that Mary might like A as much as she likes B. The basic assumption that we make is that preferences are complete. This means that for any two baskets, a consumer always knows which one she likes better or if she likes them the same. Uh, let me understand. So this means that in the example of Mary, if you take two baskets like A and B, Mary knows if she likes A better than B, or if she likes B better than A, or if she likes them the same. That's right. And we assume that Mary is able to rank any two baskets. This means basket A and basket C, basket D and basket E. Okay, yeah, I get it. Any two baskets. That's right. This is what it means for the preferences to be complete. Now, think about it. Having a ranking is pretty much like having a function that represents this ranking. Uh, what do you mean? Well, C is ranked higher than A. This means that Mary likes the basket C better than the basket A. And the function calculated at C has a value that is higher than F of A, the function calculated at A. Also, the two baskets L and E have the same ranking. Mary is indifferent between them. And the function calculated at L, F of L, as the same value than f of e, that is the function calculated at e. Let me understand. So you're saying that we can summarize all Mary's preferences simply with a function. That's exactly right. A function that represents Mary's preference is called Mary's utility function. So what I'm saying is that it is useful to describe consumer preferences using a utility function that assigns a number to each consumption basket. Let me be clearer. A function u that assigns a number to each consumption basket is an utility function if, for any two baskets a and b, u of a is bigger than u of b, if and only if Mary prefers strictly a to b. u of a is equal to u of b, if and only if Mary is indifferent between a and b, and clearly u of a is smaller than u of b, if and only if Mary prefers strictly b to a. But how can we be sure that such a utility function actually exists for Mary? This is a very good question. Well, as I told you, we need to assume that Mary's preferences are complete. We also need to assume that Mary's preferences are transitive. What does that mean? It means that if Mary likes A better than B, and she also likes C better than A, then we assume that Mary must like C better than B. So to answer your question, if we assume that the preferences of Mary are complete, transitive and continuous, then there is always an utility function that represents Mary's preferences. Uh, but what does it mean to, to assume that Mary's preferences are continuous? The, it is a more technical assumption. Loosely speaking, it means that the preferences of Mary do not jump around if we compare baskets that are very close. Um, Don't worry about it. What you should take from this is that, assuming that Mary has reasonable preferences, it is equivalent to assume that Mary's preferences are represented by a function that we call utility function. There is nothing mysterious about the utility function, it's just a way to represent consumer preferences.
Does it mean that for economists, people are functions? Not really. However, it means that if we know the utility function of a consumer and we know a budget constraint, then we can write the problem of choice of the consumer in a useful manner. That is, the consumer will choose the consumption basket that maximizes her utility function among the baskets that satisfy her budget constraint. Also, exploiting the fact that both the budget constraint and the utility function are mathematical concepts, we can write the consumer problem in a more precise way. That is, the consumer chooses the basket x1, x2 that maximizes the utility function subject to the budget constraint. So in this podcast, you learned uh, what we mean by consumer preferences, what is the utility function that represents these consumer preferences, what are the assumptions that we make on preference so that uh, an utility function can represent those preferences, meaning the preferences are complete, transitive, and continuous. And finally, we, you learned how to write the consumer choice problem.